Well hello there, Billy here again, and this time I thought we'd take a look at an input known as spec level. So strap in. I know many of you have stared at the specular input in Unreal, or any similarly built metalness based system, and thought to yourself, What even is this thing? I sure did, and for good reason. The text may just say specular, but this is a specular level input. First, some background. All metalness based systems require a separately defined specular controller for dielectrics, as that simply isn't covered by the base color input. When metalness is set to 1, or white, the base color assumes the role of a specular input, leaving you no control over diffuse values, which are simply set to none. This is fine, as it's designed to be used for metals, which by definition absorb all refracted rays, and thus are void of diffusion. When metalness is set to 0, or black, the base color assumes the role of a diffuse input. This is meant to be used for dielectric materials, which have both specular and diffuse reflection. This necessitates an additional specular controller. Some real-time systems, like Mixer or Toolbag, opt to give you no control at all and instead force a value of 4%. Many renderers, like Arnold, opt for an IOR-based input and derive its specular value from that. Redshift, on the other hand, decided to not limit you in any way, shape or form and instead opted for a full range specular input, which is completely bonkers, but also amazing as it objectively improves the methodless workflow by allowing you to completely bypass it. Then, there is specular level. So, what is this spec level thing? In short, it's a regular spec input. Some of you probably felt a little tingle of excitement upon hearing that, but don't get your hopes up. This is a neutered, amputated, and deformed specular input. What do you mean by that? Well, it's limited to grayscale only, caps out at a maximum of 8%, and has an abstracted value that means nothing and hides what actual number is being used. 0 means 0% 0 specular, 0 0.5 means 4% specular, and 1 means 8% specular. Going above 1 yields 0 change, leaving 8% your maximum allowed specular value. Uh, but uh, uh, why would they do that? I do of course not personally know whoever designed this setup, nor their intent, making me unable to claim anything with 100% certainty, but I can quite confidently say my guess is educated. It's designed this way solely because they, the creators, don't trust you, the user, to know your craft. They assume that you're incompetent, fully ignorant of material theory, and think it better to restrict you as much as possible rather than allow for potential mistakes. This thing is the very definition of what I dislike about where the industry is going. It tries its very best to shield the user from what's actually going on, and by doing so, being directly hostile toward the user learning how materials work and what values make sense. Abstracted values that mean nothing and arbitrary limits aren't helpful, they only serve to confuse and mislead. I would also argue this controller fails at its intended purpose, as it isn't any easier to use than a real specular controller would be. It's suffering from an excessive attempt at simplification that ended up being more convoluted in the end, a category the entire metalness system falls under, really. The limitations this controller imposes also comes with the baggage of lower potential output quality, as well as the inability to accurately create certain materials. Examples would be most oxides, like regular rust, common white wall paint, most gemstones, and more. Now that we know what this thing is and what's wrong with it, I thought I'd wrap this one up by decrypting this insult to your intelligence and show you how to revert it back to real, usable values. The limitations of the input are sadly hard-coded into the shader itself, but this setup would at least allow for real-world reference and some personal growth. Alright, so here we are, inside the Unreal Engine. I will go through how to make both a regular specular value controller, as well as an IOR-based controller. In the end, I'll set up a simple switch that allows you to use both in the same material and freely swap between them. I'll begin by creating a constant and converting it to a parameter. I'll name it specular value and set its default value to 0 0.04, which is 4%. 4% is the generally agreed upon basic bitch dielectric specular value and will serve as a nice default. I'll set the slider min to 0 and the slider max to 0 
This will make the value top out at 8%. Since the shader forbids us to go any higher, there's no point in letting the slider do so. If you're feeling brave, this constant can be substituted for an image input for true specular map support. Next, we need to create the math that remaps the 0 to 8% range into the 0 to 1 range that the spec level input expects. This can be done in two ways, either by dividing the value by 0 0.08 or by multiplying the value by 12.5. I'm going to go for the multiplication method here. I'll create a multiply node and hook my specular value into the A input. Then, I'll create a constant with the value of 12.5 and hook that up into the B input of the multiply node. And that's it! That's all that's required to create a proper specular controller inside of Unreal. What we have here now is basically what this controller should have been in the first place, ideally without the arbitrary limit, of course. A far better approach would have been to make this controller educational by using visual cues to tell you what range you're in over limiting it and obscuring its function. And with that little rant over, let's move on to the IOR controller. I'll again start with a constant set as a parameter, this time naming it index of refraction. I'll set the default value to 1.5, set the slider minimum to 1, and the slider maximum to 1.79. IOR 1.5 equals the previous default specular value of 4%, and IOR 1.79 equals the maximum value of 8%. I'll create a subtract node and hook up the index of refraction output into the A input of the subtract node. I'll create an add node and hook up the index of refraction output into the B input of the add node. Next, I'll make a constant with the value of 1 and hook that up into the B input of the subtract node and the A input of the add node. I'll create a divide node and hook up the output of the subtract node into A and the output of the add node into B. I'll create a multiply node and hook up the output of the divide node into both A and B. The same result can be achieved by using a power and a constant node instead, but I prefer this as it uses fewer nodes for the same effect. What we have here now is a complete IOR to specular setup, but we need to add that math again to convert the specular value to a spec level value. And here we are, a functioning IOR based specular controller. You can now look up real-world values for almost everything and use them in Unreal, assuming they don't overstep 1.79. Alright, so let's make our material able to use both. I'll start by clearing the conversion math for both controllers. To create the switching function, I use a switch parameter node and hook up the specular value output into the true input and the index of refraction output into the false input of the switch parameter. You can of course call this thing whatever the hell you want, but I chose to name mine specular value, question mark. Now, let's add that conversion math back and hook up the output of the switch parameter into the A input of the multiply node. And look at that, a real IOR and specular controller, both available within the same material and swappable with a click. You're welcome. Now, if you're worried that this would make you unable to use the hack where you bake a cavity map and stick it into the spec slot of the Unreal shader to emulate specular occlusion, don't be, because all you need to do to get that back running is to bake your cavity map with a white background instead of a grey background, then stick that together with a multiply node at the end of your chain and you're back in business. The same thing can be achieved using a pre-existing grey based cavity map by setting the white point at 127 using levels in Photoshop. A benefit of this setup is that it still allows for full control over the specular value while the cavity map is present. Thanks for watching. I'll see you around next time when I have something new to complain about. <laughs> bye bye.